Went to Nationals last year, got myself all kinds of new threads. Like this team uniform from Puerto Rico. It's even personalized. So I won't forget who I am. Now, Team Puerto Rico, they won the Team Spirit Award for the second year in a row. So if you make it to Nationals this year, you know how to win the Team Spirit Award. Hook me up. Now, we're going to start off this year's Math Counts Minis with Jack and Jill driving separate cars off to their favorite hill. Now, they're going to start from the same place at the same time, but Jill drives like a maniac. She goes 20% faster than Jack. So she gets to her favorite hill a half hour earlier. And the question is, how many hours did Jack drive? Well, it's problems about rate and time and distance, and we know how to handle that. You know, you go 50 miles an hour for four hours. Well, that's 50 times four, 200 miles that you go. So the key relationship here is how fast you go, your rate, times how long you go, your time, equals how far you go, your distance. Fortunately, here we have two drivers, we have two rates, two times, and uh, I'm just going to focus on one of them. I'm going to focus on Jack first for the simple reason that the problem asks about Jack. I'm going to say that Jack's rate is R, Jack's time is T, and Jack's distance is D. And now we already have three variables, and we've got to go deal with Jill, too. Uh, we don't want to put down three more variables because then we'll have six variables and six is too many. Uh, how are we going to avoid that? Well, they're taking the same trip. They're starting from the same place. They're ending the same place. So Jill's covering the same distance. So her distance is simply D. That's one less variable we have to deal with. And Well, maybe we can do the same thing with R and T. We can relate Jill's rate to Jack's rate. We can. Jill's rate is 20% faster than Jack's rate. It means it's one-fifth higher. That means if Jack's rate is R, then we just add on a fifth of R to get Jill's rate. It means Jill's rate is six-fifths R because it's 20% greater than Jack's. And then Jill's time, well, Jill's time is just a half hour less than Jack's. So to get Jill's time, we start with Jack's and subtract a half. We didn't need any new variables to write down Jill's equation. But now we have two pretty scary equations. Well, the right-hand sides are, are the same, so the left-hand sides have to be equal. So we can set RT equal to 6 fifths R times the difference T minus 1 half. And we've at least gotten rid of one of our variables. Now, down in this equation, well, R is not zero, so we can divide both sides by R to cancel it out. Now, we've gotten rid of another variable, so we're left with just one variable. And better yet, it's the variable we want. T is Jack's time, which is what we're looking for in this problem. So now we're going to multiply this equation, multiply both sides by 5. We get 5T equals 6 times the difference T minus 1 half. Expand that product, we get 6T minus Three. So now we have 5t equals 6t minus 3. We'll subtract 5t from both sides, add 3 to both sides, and we'll get t equals 3. Now we know how many hours Jack drove. That was a lot of work. Those were kind of scary equations. We do at least see that we start from rate times time equals distance, assign some variables, do some algebra. We can usually solve these rate problems, but I like to think more than I like to work, so I'd like to find a way to just think our way through this problem. Let's look back at this equation. We're trying to keep the distance constant here because Jack and Jill are taking the same trip. We're going to change the rate. We're going to multiply the rate by 6 fifths. What's going to happen to the time? Well, let's look at this equation again. We want to keep distance constant, so we have to keep this product constant. What happens to time if we change the rate? If we double the rate, and we want to keep this product constant, we have to have the time. So multiply the rate by 2, we divide the time by 2. Well, what if we triple the rate? Multiply the rate by 3. To keep this product constant, we have to divide the time by 3. That's how we keep this product constant. So if we multiply the rate by 6 fifths, we have to divide the time by 6 fifths in order to keep this product constant. Now, dividing by 6 fifths, that's the same thing as multiplying by 5 sixths. So now we know that Jill's time 
is five-sixths of Jack's time. And now I can solve this problem with the picture. Check this out. Now that we know that Jill's time is five-sixths Jack's time, I'm going to draw a little picture here of Jack's time. So this is all of Jack's time. Five-sixths of it is when they're both driving. Five-sixths of they're both driving. One-sixth of it, it's just Jack. That's because we know that Jill's time is five-sixths Jack's time. Well, we know that Jack is driving alone for half an hour. Well, this part of the trip is one-fifth this part of the trip. This part's five times that part. That means this part of the trip is five halves hours. So Jack's time is five halves hour plus one half hour. That's three hours. Same thing we got back here. So we can work through all these equations, or we can stop, think a little bit, maybe draw a picture and jump straight to the answer. Which of these solutions do you like better? Yeah, I like this one too. All right, let's look at the next problem. Way too many words. All right, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep track of all this information. So what I'm going to do is, as we read through this, I'm going to draw a picture because uh, that'll help me keep track of the information and in the previous problem we could just draw a picture and we had the answer. So maybe we can draw a picture to get to the answer here too. So we've got a hot air balloon is going to descend at a constant rate of 15 feet per minute starting from 1200 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture of that because I'm going to forget that by the time I get down here. So we're starting at 1200 feet. We're going down 15 feet a minute. Okay, 15 feet per minute. All right, same time, there's this small little helium filled balloon. There's some poor little kid, let's go. It starts at 10 feet, and the little girl's sad because the balloon's flying away. It starts from 10 feet, and it's flying away at 5 feet per second. So we're going to go ahead and add that to our picture, too starts at 10 feet and it goes up at 5 feet per second. Wait a second, I don't want to write that down yet. This is 5 feet per second. This is feet per minute. We want to keep our units the same so we don't mess up, we don't get confused, we don't make a careless mistake. 5 feet per second, there are 60 seconds in a minute, so 5 feet per second is 5 times 60 is 300 feet per minute. Got to keep our units lined up. All right, so this is going up at 300 feet per minute. How many minutes will it take for the two balloons to be at the same height? So we basically want to see when these two altitudes, these heights, are the same. Well, we can break out some algebra just like we did back in the first solution before. We can write equations for where this balloon is. You know, it starts at, starts at 1,200, and then it's going downward at 15 feet per minute. So if we let the amount of time that it's going to be going be t, its height will be 1200 minus 15t. And this little balloon, it starts off at 10, and it goes up by 300 feet each minute. So it's going to go up by 300t. And now we have an equation we can solve for t, which is nice because t is what we're looking for. And it's in minutes, too. Make sure we have the right units. So t is the time in minutes. So now let's solve this equation. We'll subtract, let's see, we'll subtract 10 from both sides, add 15 to both sides, and we'll get 1190 equals 315t. So t is 1190 divided by 315. Decimal to the nearest hundredth. I don't have my calculator. Ugh. That means I'm going to have to use this. All right, here we go. 315, I know what 315 is. That is 9 times 35. Because 315 is 350 minus 35. Now let's check out 1190 up here. I want to see if, well, 9's not going to go into there. 5 will go into there, but I don't want to divide that by 5. Let's check 7. 7 into 119. 119 is 70 plus 49. 70 and 49, both divisible by 7. This is 7 times 17 times 10. Now we can simplify. 7 and the 35 leaves me a 5. 5 and the 10 leaves me a 2 up here. 
17 times 2 is 34. We've got 34 over 9. 34 over 9, that's 3 and 7 ninths. 7 ninths is 0.77777 forever, so to the nearest hundredth, that's 3.78. Wait a second. There's got to be a faster way, right? Got this nice little picture. We showed a slick way for the first problem. Let's see what's going on here. These two balloons, they start, this one starts at 1,200, this one starts at 10. They start 1,190 feet apart. That's the distance between them at the beginning. Now, instead of looking at each of them separately, let's look at them relative to each other. Let's look at what's happening here. They're moving towards each other at a combined rate of 315 feet per minute. They're moving towards each other, so we can think of the total distance as 1190 that we're trying to cover, and the distance between them is closing by 315 feet per minute. Our distance is 1190. Our rate is 315. That's how fast they're moving together. It's how fast they're coming together. So if I take my distance, 1190, divide by my rate, 315, I get my time. So this second solution, we could have jumped straight to this instead of going through this up here just by thinking about the motion of these two relative to each other. We call this relative motion. Now, it's pretty slick here, but it's amazing in physics. And we don't just use it when we have two moving in opposite directions here, where they're moving towards each other. Now this one's moving down, this one's moving up. We can also use this sort of thinking when we're moving in the same direction. For example, I know this much math. You know this much math. You know, I know why you're watching these videos. You're trying to catch up to the old man, right? Now, I'm still learning. I'm still learning, but I'm old, so I don't learn that much. I learned about this much math each week. But you're watching these videos. So while I'm learning this much math each week, you're learning this much math each week. So I'm learning this much. You're learning this much. You're catching up to me by this much. I need someone to make videos for me.